Hi, everybody. Wow, thank you again for coming this week. The fact that you guys are here is fantastic. Uh, we love that you visit us every Friday at 5. Um, means an enormous amount. So um, before we get started with Act 2, uh, I just have a few little tiny announcements. And um, I want to let you guys know, you know, we have a lot of regulars now who come and visit us uh, every week. And if you are not getting the invite, what I recommend is that you, at the bottom of our homepage, there's a subscription thing that you could fill out. So I really recommend that you just go on there and fill that out. And that way we can uh, make sure that you remain on our list on a weekly basis. Um, the second thing is, is that I know many of you guys know, uh, hear me talk about our tip jar. This is completely free. We don't ask for donations, any of that. But um, if you, care to tip us at the beginning, at the end, anytime. Just um, help keep us sustainable. That's fantastic and we would love it. Today is act two of Anna by Savannah, which is a new play by Devin O'Brien, starring Joanna Merlin as Anna and Kelsey Griswold as Savannah. And it's directed by Martha Gaiman. The action of act one takes place on November 15th, 1983. Anna is a bedridden 90-year-old perched in a penthouse on Park Avenue. Savannah, an aspiring actress in her 20s, has been hired to check in on Anna every day, bring a fresh bagel in the New York Post. They've settled into a daily routine which they both enjoy. Savannah revels in Anna's life stories and Anna enjoys the company. But Anna dismisses Savannah's hopes and aspirations. Obsessed with lurid stories in the New York Post, Anna hardly takes notice of the young woman in front of her eyes. Anna's obliviousness permits Savannah some freedom to practice her speeches by Anton Chekhov and to pursue a secret purpose she finds in her tedious job. While Anna, at the end of her life, is obsessed with the stories of her past, Savannah copes with the self-destructive demons that beset her as she sets out on life. These take the form of pills and at the end of act one in a visit from the man. He brings her a suitcase full of props and a baggie with some pills. Hi, their foreplay hidden from Anna in another room leads to sex. When the man exits, he leaves Savannah passed out and slumped on the floor for the night. Act two lights up the following morning, a brand new day. Savannah is where we left her, i.e. in a lump on the living room floor. Enthroned in her bed, Anna studies a newspaper. It is yesterday's and practically shredded from use. I wonder who sings this song. I wonder who should sing her Savannah exits into the kitchen, oh. off stage sound, running water. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Did somebody tell you I was dying today? Uh, no. Is that why you're here today? Nobody told me. I'm here every day. What are you doing? Putting things in order, putting things where they go. What, what day is today? Tuesday. Tuesday. So, so yesterday was Monday. I, it didn't feel, it didn't, it didn't feel like a Monday. What does a Monday feel like? <sighs> what, why don't you take your sunglasses off? I haven't taken my sunglasses off because I haven't had time to take my sunglasses off because I only just got here. Take this. I am going to tell you something in a minute. Did you wind the clock? I never did like a dead thing. Feel the plants. I don't remember when I watered them last. How is it? How is it? Dry as a bone. I thought so. I think you better give it a drink. 
I wanted to tell you something. What was it? The penny. Ah, go, go to my drawer, the top drawer. And on the furthermost left-hand side, there's a red box. Open the box and take that to the bank and cash it in. Oh my God. Uh, I don't, I don't think I can carry all of these. They're so heavy, and you certainly couldn't. One day I took it all out to count and I made piles, 20 or 30 piles, and my whole counter was filled with rows of pennies. Oh. And I wrote it down on a piece of paper. And then I lost the paper. Hey, hey, where are you taking those? I, I, I thought I'd put the box by the front door to take them to the bank. I was saving them for my grandkids. Oh, did they visit you? Oh, kids today don't want pennies. Today, even a dollar is not worth much. You wipe your behind with it. But in those days, a dollar was really a dollar. You bought a dollar's worth of groceries. You got a pound of butter. You got a bag of flour. You got eggs. One guy sold 26 eggs and the other guy sold 27. There was a competition. <laughs> Ivana opens her tape recorder, dumps dead batteries, fumbles through her bag, finds new ones, puts them in, and flips the tape. She sees the Polaroid left by the man, picks it up, and pulls the picture free. She looks at it, then stuffs it in her bag. Savannah takes the suitcase and enters bedroom and sets it by the chair. You ready? When am I not? Do you want your paper? That would be nice. I'll take yesterday's, give me yesterday's. You know, I found that women in my category uh, never bought a newspaper. That always surprised me. I couldn't go a day without checking in with the world. Mm. I'm very upset with our president today. Now there's an illiterate ignoramus a guy like that can become president of the greatest country on earth? My God. <gasps> oh, what? What? Oh, I can't read. I'll get the light here. It's not the light, it's what I'm reading. My eyes are filled with tears from the things that happened to girls in this city. Teen golf pro beaten oh. to the <laughs> New Jersey lawmen have an 18-year-old suspect in a girl's grisly <sighs> murder. Oh my God! Okay, what I is got happening to our world? I can't. Just no. Just an 18-year-old woman golf pro was found brutally bludgeoned to death in her apartment in Princeton, New Jersey. <gasps> oh, just don't read another one, okay? I I I don't want to hear it. So just please turn the page. I'm not through with this page. What's on the next? The next page is, oh, that TV actress? Now there's a stupid girl. Think she was an Egyptian in a former life. <laughs> she was married to that actor that he makes a lot of money in television, but she wants two million a year. <sighs> we, uh, we read about her yesterday. And what is there about her? I'd like to see what she's got between her legs. It must be jeweled and played a platinum. I wouldn't care if she had a child with him, if she suffered and bled, but she didn't. I am never for a man, but this woman makes all women look bad. It's not that I like him. Every time I see him, I want to punch him. But if I could get out of bed, I would march for him. I would pick at the courthouse, draw pictures of her privates with jewels around it. Okay, okay, what's next? Well, give me a minute. The sound uh, of rain. Next page is um, a three-day sale at Gimbel's. Oh, I don't need anything from Gimbel's right now. Look, it's pouring outside. So, what shall I do? 
in order for things to grow, the rain must come. If you don't have rain, you don't have food, the animals will die. Pray for rain, people in the world, pray for rain. Rain always makes me think of applause. I was brought up in such a non-religious home, you wouldn't believe it. And yet, in my heart, I was probably more religious than all of them for appreciating the sunlight and the rain and the moon and the stars. Is that a red light? No, it's my radio. Does it look like one? I know. How does this dress go? Oh, my mother. My mother was my dressmaker. I mean, she wasn't much of a seamstress. But one thing she had down was the square neck. Oh, I was so happy. Well, call it ignorance, but I was like a flower coming out of that dress. Why did you say you kissed the ground where I walked? Someone ought to kill me. I'm so tired. I wish I could rest, just rest, but I'm a seagull. No, that's not right. That's not it. I, I, I'm an actress. Oh, well. My mother never went to a synagogue. She used to say, if I want to pray, I pray right here. I don't have to go in a closed building where the stench is enough to kill you. They prayed to something they didn't know, to nothing. At least my mother read poetry. Uh, who prayed? Well, the, the, the men in the synagogue. The synagogue were the dreariest places to go. I used to visit the people that had dead people in the house. You know how Gentile people lay out their dead, dressed in their tuxedo? Well, I saw them all. You used to visit dead people? Yeah. Oh, that's... That's so weird. Well, I guess, I guess it is something weird, but I used to marvel at how they looked alive and how they were dressed with their best tuxedo or whatever it was, and a, and a crepe outside the door, and outside the door to indicate that somebody had died. Do you remember someone shot a seagull? They opened an Italian an Italian church and I had a visit. He laughed at my dreams and little by little I lost heart. I acted badly. I, I didn't know what to do with my hands. You have no idea how dreadful it is to know that you're acting disgracefully. Well, these Italian, these Italian churches didn't have electric light. The candles, beautiful, beautiful figures of Jesus. And so I, I went around exploring. I had, I had an acquisitive mind. Inquisitive mind. No, I don't mean inquisitive. I mean acquisitive. Get a dictionary. Why acquisitive? Well, call it inquisitive. It was more than inquisitive. It was a mind that wanted to know acquisitively. Well, anyway, I'm not a thorough one on English, but this happens not to be misused. I wanted to know things. Death was something I, I didn't understand. So I used to be a committee of one, investigating. Do you want more coffee? What? Do you want me to warm it up? Do I want you to make a fuss? Coffee, do you want more? I, wa I want to know why you're wearing a noose. What was I saying? Um, did you mention a pigeon? Okay. I am talking of the stage. Now, I understand that in our work in acting or writing, what matters is not fame, not glory, not what I dreamed of, but of knowing how to be patient. 
I love this cup. Imagine loving a cup. Yes, I'll have some more. All right. Ah, I'll make some more then. She's a nice girl, but morbid. Anna gets up and goes and sits in the chair. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, are you okay? Stop it, stop it. I'm just sitting in a chair. I thought it was I thought I would die a minute ago. Uh, I'm gonna die. So am I. I knew you would say something foolish like that. Well, does your head hurt? Everything hurts. That's why I jumped out of bed. I thought I was expiring. If anything happens, call Mr. Nimkoff. Okay. Um, what's going to happen? What happens to everyone in this life? There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. I I feel calm. Everything is ebbing away like a wind blowing in a wasteland. Ooh, I'm cold. T to help me get back. Do you want another blanket? Do you have another? I'll check the closet here. The closet, we had a good laugh, that girl and I. What's her name? The name of the maid. Irene? Irene. What did you laugh about? I was telling her, it was so nice that you did my laundry. I so appreciated it. She said, what laundry? And I said, my laundry. She brings out the whole bag of laundry from the closet and says, you mean this laundry? So I said, isn't it done? And she said, it's not done, it's dirty. So I said, oh, I see, she did her laundry. <laughs> A whole day you were down in the laundry and let my laundry stay there in the closet. Oh, we laughed about it. Irene came here and did her laundry? Who's Irene? Who did her laundry? She didn't have any laundry. Your laundry, you did. She didn't have any. Did, did, did you do her laundry? No, wait, who, who did laundry for a whole day and didn't do yours? You, a whole day you were down in the laundry room. What were you doing down there? I did all your shirts. I did your pants and I did towels and sheets. I, I never did my laundry here. That's mean of you to say. I, I never did your laundry. That's what I said. No, I mean, your laundry. I've done your laundry. I've never done mine here. So, how come it's all there? Well, <laughs> we laughed about it. Well, that's mean that you're laughing at me and I didn't do, I didn't do my laundry here. I've never done my laundry here. I, I did your laundry. I washed all your filthy shirts that hadn't been washed in a year. Is there a bag of laundry in there? I'm glad you two had a good laugh. I mean, though it's not very nice. There's half a bag. Did she do your laundry? Why should she do it? I didn't ask her to do it. Well, I'll do it tomorrow. I didn't ask you to do it. I don't even want you to do my laundry. Would you do one thing? Read my horoscope. It says, stop being mean or you'll end up all by yourself. I was doing something nice for you. Do you think it's pleasant being in, in the basement all day? I mean, <laughs> you don't appreciate it. You, you put me down with the maid. I didn't ask you to do it. That's right. I was being thoughtful. Who else does things for you? Your own children don't come. I'm the one who's here. My daughter lives in Europe. 
My son married a tramp and moved to California 3,000 miles away. Isn't that sad? The grandchildren don't live in California or Europe. They live across the park and they don't come. She poisoned their minds against me. When he married her, I cried. Not to him. I never said anything to him. I have never said one bad thing about her. You have. You dreamt that. Are you saying I'm a liar? As God is my judge, you dreamt it. When he married her, I cried, but to myself. I consoled myself. I told myself, at least he's happy. Have I ever said any, no, no, it doesn't matter. My reputation is made long before you came upon the scene. And you won't find one human being in this world to talk against me. Why am I even trying to win an argument with you? There's no use. It's useless. What's the point? There's no point. If I, if I make a point now, no matter how good my point is, you won't remember my point a minute from now. That's what I'm talking about. But do I rate a telephone call? What am I, a monster? Do I sound like an illiterate, ignorant human being? I gave her a lot of rope, didn't I? She buys homes with my blood money and on my deathbed, I don't merit a phone call or, or a salutation on my birthday. My daughter comes on my birthday. Are you sure? Oh, sure, I'm sure. Every year she is here on that day. That is not a thing she would miss. Do you know what today is? Today is Tuesday. Isn't that what you said? Do you know what yesterday was? I suppose it was Monday. I, I don't mean the day, I mean the date. Do you know what month this is? What month is this? Is it March? Uh, is, it, is it May? What difference does it make, sweetheart, when I'm in bed? Today is Tuesday. We have already established that about today. November 16. So it follows um, no, no, yesterday. No. No, yes, yesterday never follows today, honey, and, and that even you should know. November 15th. So, what of it? Did you see her yesterday? Of course I did not. My daughter lives in Europe. What she sees in Europe, I have no idea. What have they got in Europe that we do not? Foreign currency. Oh, no, don't be mean. You're a nice girl. I hope you marry the right fella and have lots of babies. I'm an old woman at the end of her days. When you get old, think of me. How old am I? 90. Good. Uh, you turned 90 yesterday. Yesterday? What was, what was yesterday? Give me the paper. I was born November 15th. I don't, I don't believe this. I mean, she, she always, always comes, comes back for that. Maybe she called. Did she call? No one called yesterday. Did he? I don't know. Did he? Did she? She probably called. Are you sure it was my birthday? She didn't come. Was there no card? They probably called. You just don't remember. Well, what do you know? Here I am on my deathbed, and everybody near and dear to me isn't here and isn't coming.
Let me fix your pillows. Don't you got anything better to do than to fluff my pillows? You should be somewhere. I am somewhere. I'm here. This is my job. I'm 90 years old. How did, how did that happen? You're young, such a short time, such a fleeting moment. What, if, what exactly is your job? I come every day. I bring you a bagel, your New York Post, and I listen to your stories. I bring you whatever you need, coffee or water. Uh, on um, my deathbed, I have to hire somebody to bring me water? You didn't hire me. Who hired you? Mickey? Miriam? Mr. Nimkoff. Why aren't they here? Never mind, never mind. Don't answer that. How's your head? Oh, I wish I could buy me a new one. It hurts? Like a ton of bricks sitting on it. He pay good? He pays okay. You want some aspirin? Aspirin will help. Anison? No, no, it won't help. Excedrin. That's no good. Excedrin might help. I don't take anything that would help, honey. I've gotten to a point. Give me some arsenic, some poison. I'll take that. It might end all my problems. I don't have arsenic. Here's an Excedrin. Did you take an Excedrin? Ecstasy. Just a crumb of one. Is that for headache? It's for malaise. Malaise. What's that? Is that contagious? <laughs> what does it matter? Whatever that is, I haven't got it yet. Don't worry. Sure, people don't get malaise. Don't get mixed up with pills. After my daughter was born, I had a nervous breakdown, and the doctors gave me pills like they were popcorn. Is that something red there? Sticking out of like a light or something? No, it's just my radio. But, but, but there is a red light. It's not a light. But it's red. Yes. It looks like a light. See, if you look at it from the side. I don't, I know what you mean. I don't need to see it. I just want to know that I'm not not normal. But Do you want to see anything? things that are not seeing things that are not there? Do you want to see a doctor for about your head? Is something wrong with my head? You said that it hurt. Well, maybe it'll get better. Or maybe it'll get worse. What an optimist you are. You didn't take your pill. I don't like to swallow without water. Anna throws the blankets off and scuttles out of bed to the bureau, <laughs> snatches tape recorder and presses buttons. And yet, in my heart, I was probably more religious than all of them. For appreciating the sunlight and the, the rain and the moon and the stars. Radio my ass! Anna scrambles back to bed, taking the tape recorder. She hides it under the covers. All right, there you go. Uh, Anna? Anna? Uh, what, what is it? It's, it's, it's not too cold, see? 
Why not? I want, uh, I want cold. Oh, you do? Sure I do. Who would enjoy a swallow of water that's tepid? Okay. Anna takes the tape recorder out from under her covers, flips tape and presses play. She abruptly stops, though, when Savannah enters. Oh, thank you. Thank mm, you. You're very welcome. Is it um, ecstasy? Excedrin. Were you going to tell me a story? Was I? What was the topic? Uh, your nervous breakdown, maybe? I don't know why that should be of any interest to you. Well, I'm interested. I'm interested in why you're interested. Why don't you tell me a story? I don't have any. Something must have happened in your life. Not really. I, besides, I like listening to yours. Why is that? Uh, is your mother Southern? My mother? I'm presuming you have a mother. I have one, yes. Is she from the South? No, nope, Minnesota. Why did she name you Savannah? She didn't. I named myself Savannah. You named yourself? Yes. Why? Because I didn't like Sue. Your mother didn't mind? My mother doesn't know. She's in Minnesota. What made you pick that one? I never heard of that for a name. It means open space with just grass, not a lot of trees. I know, I know. Savannah, Georgia. Have you been to Savannah? No. Ever seen one? No, there are not a lot of them anymore. Anyway, I, I told you uh, not, a, not much has happened to me, so. There's a story in everyone's life. How do you think stories are generated? Or didn't you know that? Where is it, Anna? Where's what? My radio. I don't have your radio. My tape recorder. Oh, is there a tape recorder around here? There is it. It's mine. Oh, what a fool I am falling for that. When I saw the red light beaming from the start, every time I asked, you answered with a lie. I didn't know you were such a skillful liar. Give it back to me. It's mine. The stories of my days are mine. Did somebody tell you to tape me? No. Did you tape me every day from the start? No. Why did you want to tape my stories? Give it to me. Tell me why first. I didn't at first. No, I... The first day I came in, I sat down in this chair and you told me about your life. Well, when you get to be my age, you take inventory, you reminisce. You didn't know me, but you looked at me and, and you talked to me like you did. You said, who are you anyway? Some kind of angel sent to help me die? I mean, <laughs> what a question. I mean, you seemed, you seemed so lucid. I, I considered it. Well, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. So when Mr. Nimkoff offered me the position, I... The position I, as an angel? to listen and help you die. Never heard of that. Part angel and the other part thief. You didn't have anyone. I mean, everyone he got, you drove them crazy. They walked out after a week or just after even one day. No one lasted except for me. So you decide to steal. I didn't just decide one day. I, what happened was you, you didn't die. Oh, <laughs> that must have been a terrible disappointment. That's really something. I didn't die. You could have quit. I wanted to quit, but I, 
I said that I'd stay and listening was like school to me. And I loved the girl that you were, you had gumption. I mean, you knew how to live life. Well, you got an education, sure. There's this thing that my acting teacher says. He says, um, oh, never mind. Forget it. <laughs> How ridiculous do you even talk to you? You won't understand. So, why is that? Am I known to be an incorrigible ignoramus? You won't understand because it has nothing to do with making a deal or making a book. Okay, an artist. An artist takes inspiration everywhere in everything and from everyone. I listened and listened and it drove me crazy, but I loved them and I thought maybe I, maybe I could make something. Of my life? Of my life, of my job. You became a thief. No, stop saying that. You, know, you, sh you should thank me, actually. I mean, what's gonna happen to your stories when you die? It's not like, it's not like you're by the fire, surrounded by grandchildren who adore you. You're alone. I had no idea you'd mind. So why didn't you tell me? I worried that you would. So you were going to embarrass me after I die? Oh, I was going to write something. I, like a play, maybe? Or something? I don't know. I just... I know your stories by heart. Incredible things happened to you. Your story seemed better than life. I, I told this friend of mine, he told me he was a director. He said he wanted to make new things out of old. Two of the lies he told me. A bandit and a culprit he turned out to be. No, you're no angel, honey. I never said that. I was just trying to make something. My life feels like such a botched job. I don't have... I don't have a mother. She ran away somewhere, somewhere in the South, and the guy is not good. He's a liar and is into pills and, well, other stuff, so. Sounds like you're pretty much on your own, kid. That's right. Just like you, and just like you say, I'm wrong about everything. But I am the one person besides you who cares about your stories, and and you don't appreciate it. Any kindness only makes you meaner. There, I've told you. Now give me back my tape recorder. I threw it out the window. You didn't. It's there. You tricked me into telling you. There's a skirmish over the tape recorder. It's rough and there's a moment when Savannah could hurt Anna, but she stops herself. Then Anna bests her and shoves her aside. Just try and take what's mine. I'll kill you. Oh, my God. <sighs> okay. Okay, Mickey. I'm very glad that you love your wife, and I hope yeah, yeah it's relevant, because otherwise you'd kick her in the ass. That's why I sound upset. I'm upset with myself. I gave her a lot of rope, didn't I? And you can tell her she can drop dead. And you, and you get yourself, instead of a whore, a decent wife. Yes, I will curse her from my grave. From my grave, I will curse her. That, that's me? Yes. Talking to Mickey? Mm-hmm. When was that I was talking? I guess yesterday. I guess... Uh... Because he called yesterday on your birthday. I think if most of us knew the future, we wouldn't live long. Some of us have hope, I guess. Keeps us alive during our life, but most of us die in despair, I think. Get your own stories. I will. All the world's a stage. And here you stay, wasting the time of your life, standing on my bed, practicing your speeches. I will go. 
I intend to. As soon as, as soon as you're gone, I will go. What? You gotta wait? I promised Mr. Nimkov. I, I may be a thief, but I keep my promises. Is that what's taking you so long? I did not know that. You're fired. Okay. Wait till I tell Irene, the thief you turned out to be. You're the thief. You sap me of my vitality. You, you mock my dreams. I, you were the luckiest person I've ever met. Do, do I get to know what you knew? The, the chance to be happy with nothing more than a bit of hot coal to warm my bed or a raisin in some bag of crumbs? I mean, <laughs> no wonder you don't die. You're too selfish. What do I know? Just episodes of the plots of TV shows by heart. What, what's happened to me? I've had sex. I've had some drug escapades. I've had hangovers, but, and I'm no angel, that's true, but your stories of the way of the world were, they were the best thing that's ever happened to me so far, by far. Savannah stands ready to go. The suitcase is packed and her handbag is on her shoulder. Goodbye, Anna. When I go, you're gonna be alone. I was never alone. Even when I was by myself, I was in good company. Now there's a thought you should record and cherish. Before you go, tell me something. Did I eat today? Um, it doesn't feel like I did. I'll give you something. Anna flings the covers off and goes to Savannah's handbag, rifles through and finds a baggie of pills and counts. Aha. Uh -huh. Anna stuffs the baggie into the bag and scurries back to bed. Anna? Anna. There's a, what is it? What is it? Cheese and crackers. Um, I made you cheese and crackers. Did you, did you change your mind? Yeah. I decided not to be an old fool in bed anymore. I'll, I'll put them on the table then. You can have them later. Would you mind winding my clock? Could you feel the plants? Do I got a horoscope? Uh, yep, yeah, every day. Read mine. November 15th. My mother said, when I was born, I lit up the whole room. I was so beautiful. Your courage will guide you today. Something's off. Savannah goes to the bed and pulls out the tape recorder. What do you want me to do with this? I'll make you a deal. Oh, I forgot you don't do deals. You're an artiste. You want to be in show business, you got to learn to do business. What's the deal? I give you my stories and you give me your pills. My pills? What do you want with my pills? It's my business. You're not going to. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm giving you free reign with my stories. 
I get all your stories? With my blessing. I do do whatever I want with them? Recite them from the rooftops, shout them in the subway. We got a deal? Deal. You got a favorite? Your first job. That'll be three pills. Three pills? For one story? Mm -hmm. I don't believe this. You work so hard? Yeah. You got another one? How, how you got home? How many pills you got left? None, I don't have any more. Three, you've got three. How did you know that I had three more? I took inventory. You went to my bag? I did my research, give them to me. You want all of my pills? If I'm giving you my inheritance of stories, I gotta know you're not gonna be mixed up with pills. Promise? Good. You're a thief that keeps her promises. I need water. Anna, what are you doing? It's, it's, um, it's not like I'm by the fire, surrounded by grandchildren who adore me. Cool. But Mickey or Marion. I... Nobody comes here, honey. 90 years old. You wonder, how did you spend your life? Where did it go? My first job, tell it to me. Uh, uh, in, in the department store, um, in the basement, there were so many broken things cups, an ear off a cup, dishes, um, it was all there. It's like, it's all broken. I, uh, I come in the basement, I'm not more than 14 years old, so I was sitting there. I had a table. There was a table of things needed mending and I was mending. I kept mending. And and along came the man, the superintendent, the boss of all working ladies. Mr. Wilson, I think they called him, if my memory serves me. Mr. Wilson, that's right. Uh, he, he walks over and he sees all these minted things and he says to me, um, Miss Anna, did you do all of these? I shook my head. And in wonderment, he says to me, but where did they get all the, these broken things? I said, look under my table. There's a lot there. I got a lot to do. I had a lot to do. What is it that deadens my feet? Oh, forget it. Now, how do I get home? Hey. It used to cross great lots, and there used to be lots in Brooklyn, empty lots. Everybody dumped the garbage on the lots. We didn't have the sanitary conditions you have today. It was heaped with garbage and broken things, and I used to go a shortcut through all the debris. It was terrible. But sometimes. My mother and I, we found wildflowers. Sarah Bernhardt, that's what I call you. 
These are Anna's last words. Savannah studies Anna. Lights shift. Sound, a deluge of rain or applause. Savannah takes the tape recorder and pushes the button and holds it up like the trophy that it is and captures the sound of the rain. Lights fade to black. The red LED glows. End of play. Wonderful, thank you all. Thank you very much, Kelsey. If I could have the whole cast return, please. Can you see me? There we go. Thank Kelsey and Joanna. That was beautiful. Hello, Devin. Martha, I'm not sure if we have, if we have Martha. I know you had a, there we go, we have Martha. Fantastic. Um, right now it's about three minutes to six. And, um, you know, we'll go over. So if, if people have to leave, then I totally get it. We all totally understand, but we just want to open it up to the, the house. Um, I'm going to go right to Sharon. Sharon Shane. Let's see. Uh, give it a sec. There you go, Sharon. You're on. Oh, I'm so glad I tuned in again this week. I've been waiting all week. Just beautiful, beautiful work by the two actresses and Martha oh, and Devin. Just, I just, I don't know, my heart is in my mouth, to quote Shakespeare. I just, it really shows you what, what the possibilities are on this Zoom. And uh, I'm a little familiar with the play, having read it and the playwrights unit. And I was really eager to see it. And you guys just brought such truth and beauty to it. So thank you. I'm, I'm going to carry this with me all weekend, really. It's just something to consider now. With what we're going through and how we don't know what the next year will bring. And all the things we, I think, are questioning. I am, anyway, now. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to jump to one question. It says, Devin, what is your experience looking at your younger self through the lens of where you are now in life as a woman, an artist, and just a person? Got <laughs> 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 a great question. Joanna, please unmute yourself so we can um, hear you. Um, I just want to, I have to first say that was beautiful. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Martha. And above all, Thank you, Kelsey and Joanna. Thank you so much for realizing this play so beautifully. Um, yeah, it's true. It is sort of related. Uh, it is, this play was born out of an experience of mine, um, meeting an amazing woman. Um, one has to um, imagine to convert uh, your experience into a play. Uh, one has to think theatrically. So obviously I had to enhance or make things happen that didn't happen, but um, I, I just feel so lucky that uh, I had Kelsey to um, inhabit this girl, um, this young woman, um, at this critical moment in her life. She just did a beautiful, beautiful job. So it was very, um, it was very moving for, for me to have that moment where she actually, I, the, the play is titled Anna by Savannah because this is the play that Savannah created from all those broken things. And um, so it's quite meaningful to me to um, have it realized today. So thank you all for being here. Very wonderful. And there's a part B to this question, and that goes to Kelsey. Um, seeing Savannah as a version of Devin at the age you are now, and knowing her as you've got her <laughs> through as an artist. So if you could link those together. I mean, if I get to be half the woman that Devin is, that would be... That's a success. And I, I feel, you know, I'm, I'm exactly Savannah's age. So it, I, it's, Devin and I have had a lot of very interesting conversations as to how to pull from my own life and own mentality and sort of how I am this grandiose, have this grandiose perspective of acting and theater and how I don't really read the room a lot of the time. So I, 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 I love that I'm able to play something that's a little closer to home, but Devin is just, I mean, she's, uh, 
she's a role model. And that's what I, you know, I've been very lucky to be a part of this process because same with Joanna and Martha and, and you, Todd, is that just everybody's a role model to me and I get to look up to you and I look, I look forward to the future. We believe you have a big future, so don't go away. <laughs> yeah. Where's so, Joe? Why isn't Joe in here? Uh, I, I look up to Joe too. <laughs> But we're going to go to Stu Burke. Stu has a question. So Stu, uh, Stu, you're going to unmute in one second. So let's see here. Stu, can you unmute yourself, Stu Berg? Uh, there we go. You're on. Yep, you're good. You, you succeeded in doing something people have wanted to do for years, and that's mute me. <laughs> <laughs> And now, and now I've got to talk. I don't know what I'm going to say. I, 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 it was lovely, lovely work, and uh, it, it's a, it's quite an interesting and moving piece, Devin. Uh, I uh, want to compliment both of the actresses, and I want to compliment Martha, who I think did a terrific job. And one of the things that really struck me, and Todd, I don't know if this was you doing it or not, but uh, in the situations where we had the two people up at the same time, at least that they were on my in my Zoom, yes. and the fact that nobody just waited for their lines. There was wonderful reactions, and I really want to compliment you guys on that. So thank you for a very nice day. And if I may, I'm going to mute myself <laughs> or commute myself, probably. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm, I'm reading this. So here, Stu, I'm just gonna. Sounds horrible. I'm going to turn you off here, Stu. Um, no, help. <laughs> um, so um, I have one. No respect to the men in the room. This is really a tribute to the complexity of female relationships. Thanks, Devin, for distilling the elements of the special relationship. So much for so many of us to relate to at all ages. Wonderful writing, acting, directing. This is a new form of entertainment. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Elizabeth Malloy. Elizabeth Malloy. Yes, really lovely. Deirdre says, this is really lovely. Thank you so much. Beautiful and sensitive production. Um, Renee Lawrence, amazing cast and creative. Special shout out to my sweet sister, Kelsey. <gasps> oh. uh, fantastic, fantastic. Um, we're almost at five after six. If anybody has any final questions or thoughts, uh, Lucinda says, wonderful. If anybody has any more questions, um, then what I'm gonna do is say, is say uh, thank you very much both to everybody out in the world and uh, to this fantastic cast and creative team. It was wonderful. The last two weeks, as we were saying earlier, this is only our second full length play and they're challenging because there's so many moving pieces and I think everybody did just an amazing job. So thank you guys so, so much. Thank you uh, so much, Todd. Oh, Thank you, like, actresses, Devin. Uh, Thank you, and Joe, thank you. Does anybody want to say anything before we say our goodbyes? I didn't mean to, to take too much space. So you guys certainly have the camera and the mic. Anybody want to, any parting words? Well, I'd love to hear from Joanna about her experience playing um, Anna. Well, um, the, what was familiar to me about this character is that she, uh, was an immigrant, as was my mother. And also my mother always wanted to be an actress, but there was no possibility in her life um, that that was possible, but she was very theatrical. And I felt that Anna had had some of that, that theatrical spirit. Um, and And the other thing is that I could, I, I am an old woman and I can identify with the experience of, of confronting one's age. And, um, uh, and that, that kind of filled in some of the gaps for me um, in terms of, of a, a different character. Um, so, and Kelsey was a wonderful partner to work with and um, and I'm really, I'm really grateful to have done this play. It was my first time 
performing on Zoom, which was a little <laughs> bit of a challenge, as Todd knows. Um, but um, um, it really, I think, I think that Zoom is just creating a whole new uh, uh, impulse for new art forms. And um, so anyway, thank you to all my family and friends for coming. I want to say the same. I want to say thank you to all my family and friends for um, joining us for, um, for this hour. And uh, I want to thank you all for your beautiful, beautiful work. We do have one more hand up. Okay. So I'm going to give this Sandra Seacat. So Sandra, Sandra, you're on. Yes. Well, I, I, I so appreciated the work. It was totally authentic and deep and touched a lot of of my my heart and feelings about uh, getting old, <laughs> but that that's all I can think of. I, I could go on and on, but it was really really authentic, honest, and uh, we appreciate the writing, the acting, and the directing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you. It was beautiful and full. I'd, I'd like to say one other thing. I'd like to, to just, just to uh, express some awe for these actors because we had very little time. We're in an entirely new medium. Uh, Kelsey's in Oklahoma. Um, Joanna's in Brooklyn. Uh, Martha and I, Joe and Todd were in Los Angeles. And the fact that we, that, I mean, I guess it's just a testament to like creativity and artistic connection that we can be in all these different time zones and yet be in the same Zoom room together. And, and because of their beautiful work, just uh, share a moment of theater, uh, even though none of us are in, in the same theater. I mean, it's just this miracle of creativity and imagination, I think so been an incredible uh and the fact that they achieve these so much in their roles in you know three rehearsals this week this whole act it's just a phenomenal testament to their talent and commitment so thank you thank you Debbie. Ditto. yes i think it's really interesting how how close you can feel to people when you're in a square <laughs> i mean in our rehearsal processes just feeling so involved when I, I'm in my room by myself and just feeling so, I feel like I've hugged you all already and I, I've just been sitting here. So it's, it's really crazy. And, and I, I'm really grateful. Thank you, Devin. Thank you, Todd. And thank you, Joanna and Kelsey. And thank you, Joe. So much. <laughs> Thank you, Todd, for being so nimble to create smartphone theater uh, just when we needed it. Oh, my God. It's nothing without you guys. So this is fantastic. Um, all right. Wonderful. I'll let, I'll let the world know. So next week we're doing, we're going back to a shorter piece and it's going to be a comedy. And so next week we're doing a comedy. It's just one. I think it's just going to be one <laughs> next week, but, but we'll know. We'll know soon. Um, and then we're going back to a full length in, in two weeks from now. So, uh, but next week we have the comedy, so. All right, so uh, I'm gonna say um, thank you everybody. And uh, it was, it's been a wonderful time. And um, everybody out, out in our audience, thank you guys for coming again. And thank you. Thank you, audience. We'll see you guys again soon. Um, okay, be careful out there, be strong, share the love. See you soon. <laughs>